There have been a lot of changes in what goes into salary negotiations over the years, and recent laws around pay transparency have shifted the conversation even more. So far, about a dozen states and municipalities, including California, Colorado, Washington, and New York City, have mandated access to salary information, requiring employers to post salary ranges on job listings. There was a point in time when you'd take a job, accept whatever pay they offered you, and just celebrate the fact that you got the job. Those days are behind us, and we're now in an era of knowing our worth and having informed conversations to ensure we're compensated fairly for that worth. This is a huge game changer uh, for, for job seekers because now they'll go into jobs knowing and expecting what that salary range is going to be, so they don't go, go, go in blind anymore. I kind of equate it to before caller ID. We used to pick up the phone. You had no idea who was on the other end. And now we have caller ID. So now we know we expect, you know, not to pick up that spam, that spam bot call anymore or pick up for your mom. It's really going to empower candidates to be able to negotiate their salaries. When we're talking about negotiating our salary, there are a couple of scenarios that come into play. There's negotiating your salary when you're already an employee. And then there's the negotiation that should come in when you're interviewing for a new position. Fortunately, the approaches for negotiating your salary, regardless of those scenarios, are relatively similar. If you're on the job hunt or looking to request a pay increase, understanding your value in the job market is critical. Do your research by checking salary ranges from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics using salary comparison sites such as Payscale or Salary.com, or talking to people in your network. Company review sites like Glassdoor can also help you gain insight into competitive salary ranges for someone with similar experience in comparable roles. What do you do if you find yourself at the top of a job salary range? Luckily, all the laws give some wiggle room. Um, they, the laws do say that you can, in fact, pay above the range. Um, but, you know, under employment laws, organizations have to be very careful about doing that. They have to make sure that if they're going to be paying above the posted range, they have an objective, non-discriminatory reason for doing so. So um, was this, has this job fill been open for six months? They haven't been able to find a great candidate to fill it. Did they find a candidate who has a little bit more experience than what they were hoping for? Um, is it a remote job and the candidate lives in New York City or San Francisco, two very expensive cities in this country? Um, so as long as there's objective reasons for why they're going to pay above the range, they can absolutely do so. If you look at a lot of the job postings, um, the job postings will say underneath the ranges, and at Payscale we do the same thing, that salary is going to be based on several factors, such as experience, location, um, and, other, and other objective factors as well. So as long as organizations are using objective factors to pay above that range, they should be, they should be fine. For years, we've been at the mercy of economic events from the Great Recession to crushing levels of student loan debt. But times have changed and the workforce has felt more empowered than ever to ask for what they want from their employers. Thanks in part to the great resignation that began in 2021, we now have more negotiation power than ever before. If you know the range an employer is willing to pay for a job, then you know how much you can expect to earn. Let's talk with Lulu Cycli at Payscale to see how those laws might impact negotiations. One of the big factors that we think about when we think about some people who are maybe on the higher end of income are these additional things that they get, maybe their bonuses or commissions, things like that. Is there any transparency requirement for things like commissions or bonuses? So if the role is a commission, partly paid in commission um, or solely paid in commission, then some of the laws do state that employers do have to be transparent about, about what that means. Um, what's really great about some of the new laws, like the Washington state law, uh, the Colorado law, and the New York state law, is that employers, in addition to the salary range, is they have to include a general description of benefits, right? So this job is eligible for unlimited PTO and 401k matching and healthcare benefits and things like that. We do recognize that there are a lot of jobs out there whose ranges may not be as competitive as what candidates are expecting. And for organizations who can't pay the top dollar, like the Googles and Metas of the world, we do tell them, make sure you include your other great benefits as well. Is this a remote job? Is it a hybrid job? Do you offer education stipends? Do you offer work from home stipends? Anything else that you can put in your job description to entice candidates to apply for those jobs is great because the law only says as of now, you only have to post the base range. 
So when I was in college, I did an unpaid internship. And towards the end of the semester, I found out that the other intern was a paid intern. We were doing the exact same work. I'm not over it. (laughs) I wouldn't be over it it too. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm not okay. But um, so are there any coverages for contract workers or interns or anyone else? Or does it strictly cover paid salaried employees? It covers any employee that's any job posting that an employer is going to pay for their work. So it's not it's not um, internships. If it's a paid internship, it could apply to paid internships. Um, If contracting work, it could apply to contracting work. For us right now, the laws are so new. We're still trying to figure out what those laws are really intended to mean. Um, And the way that we find out what those laws are intended to mean is after lawsuits are filed and courts say that these are the the clarifications we have to consider. So we're still like in very new territory here, but I imagine we'll probably get some clarifications surrounding that soon. Well, it kind of shifts me to my next question. I kind of want to shift over to the existing employees. How does the transparency law impact existing employees? Well, it impacts them on two ways, on two levels. Um, Employers have to be really diligent and thoughtful now about how they prepare to post their salary ranges on job postings, because what they need to still consider are the incumbents who are doing those roles, you know, for their organization. Um, So if they do do the work behind the scenes, the leveling, the budgeting, the pay equity checks in preparation for pay transparency, then Any job that's posted with my title, for example, I should not be surprised at what a range that my employer has posted. Where employers really get in trouble is that if they're posting a job range that's much higher than any of their incumbents are currently making. So that's one way it affects employees. Um, The second way it affects employees is that there are some states that do require um, employers to provide their current employees with pay scale information for jobs that they currently hold if they ask for it. Um, So what we tell our customers at PayScale is, you know, you should be communicating pay at all aspects of the of the employee being at at, uh, working for you. So, for example, like we say that during the performance review, the increased compensation conversations, the bonus conversations, you know, tell your employee this is the range. This is the salary range for your role you fall within, I don't know, the 60th percentile. This is how much more you have to go in terms of salary. And when you're much more transparent about that, you're going to keep your employees happier. But there are some states that do actually require that communication if an employee asks for it. If I go to my boss and I say, hey, what's my salary range for you know a senior corporate attorney here at Payscale? She has to provide it to me. That's no ifs, ands, or buts under some state laws. And does that mean that employees should get to know what their coworkers make too if they're in similar roles or is it just the assumption that if you're in similar roles you know that you both fall within this window somewhere it's definitely the latter i don't know that we'll ever get to a point where organizations are going to be fully comfortable with full transparency meaning i know exactly what my coworker makes and you know what the <laughs> marketing team makes etc i don't know that we'll ever get there Um, But at least I know that my colleague who has the same job title as I do falls within the same range that I do. Um, And then, of course, you know, if I see my job being posted, you know, for recruitment, I know that I'm going to fall within that range as well. So I don't think we'll get to kind of the whoa pay transparency where kind of like the federal government where everyone knows exactly what everybody is making. Um, But (laughs) this pay transparency piece is a really great first step. What if an employee goes to their supervisor asks for the pay scale and gets told no, and they're in a state where this is required. Should they take action? Should they do anything? Or is it just kind of like (laughs) cope and deal (laughs) for now? (laughs) I think, I mean, I I think at the end of the day, if somebody's going to take, make, file a complaint or file a lawsuit, it's really up to each individual to figure out if that's the right route for them. Um, What we've actually been seeing much more of, because a lot of the times, you know, when people file lawsuits or complaints, either they're they're settled privately or we don't have access to them until they're fully resolved. So we don't really have a lot of data on how many employees or candidates are filing kind of these complaints and lawsuits right now. But what we have been seeing is that companies being held accountable in the, you know, the court of public opinion. See, we're seeing companies being blasted on social media like Twitter and TikTok um, you know, naming companies right out loud for these companies who aren't complying with the laws, who are, 
you know, not providing the salary ranges who are providing, you know, a million dollar spread in their in their salary ranges. But, you know, to me, when you see those companies doing that, it's It's a huge branding loss opportunity for these companies. I mean, branding for these organizations is huge, not only to sell their product, but to also recruit and retain their employees. A Society for Human Resource Management survey found that 73% of U.S. workers are more likely to trust organizations that provide pay ranges, and about the same number are less interested in applying to jobs without pay ranges listed. Among more than 1,300 human resources professionals surveyed, 42% or more of their organizations operate in a location that requires job postings to include pay ranges. More than two in three HR professionals also said that even when pay transparency is not required by law, their organizations still tend to list starting pay in job postings. You know, at the end of the day, we, we're seeing a lot of companies luckily complying with the new laws, but we do see some companies who are pushing back still. Um, and what what is interesting is that for these companies who are still pushing back, pay transparency may be the exception now, but it's going to be the norm in a very short amount of time. So, you know, companies should really be thinking about what they want their brand to look like. Do they want to be on the cutting edge of progress and being seen as, you know, we're we're a great company. We want to um, attract and retain the best talent. Uh, We have a diverse candidate pool. We have a diverse working, working, um, working pool of, of employees. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's important for organizations to comply in order to put out their best product. And the only way to put out their best product is to retain and attract the best talent. There are a lot of potential benefits with pay transparency, including a reduction in pay inequities, which could prevent wage discrimination by gender, sexual orientation, age, religion, and more. We're already seeing in our data at Payscale that the gender and um, minority pay gap is already starting to close. Just with, you know, looking at Colorado, which has been the oldest law in the books, Um, We expect it will start to close, but it's not going to be an overnight. When more people start talking about pay and people get more comfortable talking about about pay, it's going to force employers to take action much more quicker. So that may actually start closing the gender and minority pay gap much faster if we have to close it one organization at a time, right? Um, So I think that being able, empowering candidates and women and women of color who have been, you know, disenfranchised mainly by the gender, by the pay gap, um, it's going to empower them much more to feel more confident in talking about their pay, especially with their managers and, and HR professionals at their organizations. I'm excited that the conversation in general is no longer taboo because for so long it's like, don't talk about how much, don't talk about how much you, you know, you make with each other and things like that. So the fact that, you know, conversations are allowed to be had now is encouraging. We can absolutely thank Gen Z for that. Um, because I mean, if you look on TikTok and Twitter, they're the ones who have been kind of the most outspoken group about the about the about the pay gap and about why is it still taboo to talk about pay? I mean, our parents always told us never talk about politics, money and religion. Well, money is is pay, right? Um, so I think I think we really have the kind of it's it's a social change that was followed by legal requirements. So I think that, you know, we're moving in the right direction for sure. All right. Now we feel geared up to negotiate and we understand the newer laws and how they work. In an upcoming video, we'll talk about how these new rules can help you have informed conversations about your salary with current and prospective employers. If you want to find out if your state or municipality has adopted pay transparency laws, you can check online at the Department of Labor. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!